All right, well, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over some highlights, some insights of the old uh, duct tape queen here. Came out to do a little work on her. The battery's dead, so give me a little bit of time here and there when I got to fire up for you guys so you guys can hear. With a dead battery, cold snap came through, killed the battery. I haven't gone to the parts house yet. But uh, we'll do a quick walk around and go over some recent updates on the car that uh, weren't real good, but we'll keep it going. Um, this is my daily driver, my spectator drive car. A little bit of everything. This is also the longest car that I've ever owned. I've owned this vehicle since 2008. This is the Duct Tape Queen. She is a 98 Toyota Celica GT five-speed coupe so you know she's a she's a little bit of fun she'd been through a lot um, about 90 days after I bought this car and I was still making payments on it I had someone run a red light and everything from about this point forward didn't exist it was all completely poof, taken off at a wreck but you know since then slowly surely Put lipstick on this pig and uh, she's been real real good to me again she's got a completely stock 5s fe 2.2 under the hood um, some of the emissions controls have been deleted because you know florida and then the magic puppy is this little guy right here that is an amr 500 supercharger so that little little sucker there runs out into air to air intercooler and then comes up through some really janky stretch pipe duct taped pipe into the intake not the best setup but again it was my first time ever dealing with a non na motor my family has done nothing but na motors as long as we've done cars which is a long ass time but um, yeah, so that's the car. Again, during the spectator drags, only once did all of this piping actually make it through the race. Every other time I have busted the pipe off somewhere and lost all boost. But again, for a completely totaled vehicle that came back to life, I think she does okay. Don't mind the one weird rim here. Um, the car actually gets completely set up for track racing and I have to undo all of that when I go back to driving it as my daily. So on that note, if you guys have seen the pictures, I went out and took this thing drag racing and um, you can see some of the damage that I've already started to repair. The right front wheel came off as I was coming back home. So uh, yeah, my bad. Wheel spacers and me did not get along, so we uh, we have parted ways since then. I'm going to give her a fire up and let her warm up a little bit, and uh, I'll let you guys listen to that little supercharger whine, and then we'll go from there. Alright, so now we got her all fired up. Um, there is a major air leak because, again, I'm using really cheap parts, and right now one of the boost pipes has a big split in it. So you'll hear a lot of air hissing, but you'll at least get the idea, so. And again, exhaust on it so it really doesn't get that loud I mean it makes a nice echo off the walls of the Freedom Factory but you know wow okay there we are that's not saying much um, if you guys can look around there's a full interior headrest everything so again I drive this car every day to work when it's actually up and running because it still gets really good gas mileage. But um, you guys aren't here necessarily to hear about the Queen. You guys want to look at those videos that I teased you with at the beginning. So we're going to 
we're gonna go over some of my insights on those videos what happened what I could have done differently what I am doing differently for the next event because uh, the old duct tape queen and me are going back again so very first race ever on that circle track me as the driver again my family grew up racing out there my dad did a lot of cars out there my mom's got YouTube videos of her racing around that track all right my cousin raced the track we my family's been on that track a lot but that was my very first time hitting the high banks of the Freedom Factory formerly known as DeSoto Speedway so it was kind of a rush for me because the first event wasn't the original first event the car was going to be in um, so Cletus posted that he was going to run spectator drags as like an add-on event or no he made a whole event that was it for the spectator drags to jump in front of the original spectator drags he had that was going to be the opening show for the Danger Ranger. So in the first event, the actual Spectator Drags event, the first one ever at the Freedom Factory, me and the old duct tape queen showed up after very minimal prep. I mean, I bought two tires for the car just to try to stagger it a little bit because when you go circle track racing, you want a really big right front, lead tiny left front, so the car will naturally go left. Um, you're supposed to put camber and a bunch of other things in the car. I didn't have time for that. Again, I was daily driving this car. So bolting up two wheels onto it was about the extent of what I had the opportunity to do. Plus, I really wanted to do the duct tape racing stripes. Um, you guys will see here. That's why, again, I wanted this car to look exactly like the cars my dad ran at the track nostalgia thing personal things um, uh, just about the time it was my turn to step into the last car some things happened out at the Soto and we cut the car up and said no more so this was kind of a personal victory for me to run a four-cylinder Toyota with that paint scheme around that track But anyways, you'll see as we line up here, I get a really good jump off of the Acura. Now, I took the outside. I had the uh, option of taking that. I asked the gentleman to give me the outside because I wasn't sure how the car was going to handle the corners. And, well, if any car is going to slide up and hit the other one, I'd rather him hit me because this is a junk vehicle. I really wouldn't care if... I ran into him there would be major problems so I took the outside um, again as you can see this car has a really really good launch rate it's got 410 rear end gears and a lot of low end torque the car has no horsepower whatsoever in the upper RPMs I mean the car is only putting 120 horsepower period to the wheels give or take um, that's based off of estimations from my quarter mile times at the track and knowing what the stock motor made but anyways um, again we're just going over the video you guys just watched it um, the car did really good through first gear with the launch second gear he came back by me I stayed in the throttle all the way through from the start until we dive bombed into turn three so I was gaining back on him with third gear I love third gear but the problem with third gear is I'm out of horsepower by the time I'm there so the car tops out 
between 70 and 80 mile an hour down the back stretch. Um, supercharger runs are closer to 80. Non-supercharged runs are closer to that 70. So there's a big difference in how fast the car goes if I'm actually pushing air into the motor or not. But I made a very rookie mistake here and I didn't back out when I should have because I wanted to have the lead going into the corner. So as we rounded turn three, the car just washed up the track on four and I had to kiss goodbye to any chance I had of going on to the first round in the first race. Now again, my fault, this car had everything it needed to win that race between my crappy driving that particular race and not fully setting the car up. It is what it is. That's the first lap around the track. You live, you learn. So the next video I'm going to show you is going to be kind of a fun run between me and my cousin. Follow his Instagram page at slow 4.6 Vic. Shout out. Um, but his car is bone stock in this video. I mean, all we did was take a bunch of stuff out of the trunk and pop his hubcaps off and take his air filter off. It is a bone stock P7108 Crown Vic in this race. So I told him that I'd give him the hit. So I let him go. And then I chased him down, and then I just kind of kept in it instead of making it fun for him. So I apologize there, James. You know, I should have let it be a little closer, whatever. We'll run again. Your car's coming up. Can't wait to see it with that nitrous kit. It's going to be awesome when we get the rear end gears in it. So, again, follow him, slow4.6vic on Instagram. Um, we'll do some updates on Icky Vicky here on the channel too. But, you know, that was fun. That was my second lap ever around the track. Uh, I learned a little more. Um, the car does really well in the high groove, but it really, really likes the racing groove. Run high on the, the straightaways, run down about this far from the apron on that track, and that is the sweet spot for this particular car. So... That was it for the first event. Again, the car had zero suspension work done. All it had was three different size tires on it, bone stock motor, whatever. So Danger Ranger 5000, I think that was it, showed up. And um, Spectator Drags, part of the opening act. And this was by far my favorite race. So... I did some major upgrades to the car while we were gone. I attached that AMR supercharger. I bought some suspension parts. I put new rear struts in the car. Should have done the fronts too, but that's another story. And I put a lot of camber in the car as much as I could with semi-factory adjustable bolts. I put two and a half degrees on the right front and I put about... Uh, one degree net positive camber on the left front so the car actually sat with the tires this way so that when I hit the corner the whole tire stayed flat you'll see why that's important when you watch that race um, but I don't think the gentleman I was racing really expected anything out of the old duct tape queen what do we got down there is that a solstice and a CTSV I think that's it's a, a Celica. Celica that's a Toyota right, Celica, Celica. Celica and a CTSV. Oh, that CTSV. You got the 80s. Put some, put a little wax in there, maybe. Looks like there's an intercooler on that uh, Celica. I'll tell you what, the Celicas were a ripper in in absolute rally racing. We'll see how they handle 
the oval here. Car number four. Don't have the name on this gentleman, but would be, you would assume, 89, but not the case. And then the uh, car, 28, car 28, I believe. And that's Michael Vincent Correa. Boy, that's, that, uh, that Celica's trying yeah, to make it happen. Oh, oh, getting close. That Celica's going for the win. Coming out top right. three, oh, coming man. in high. Oh, can he close the gap? No. What do we got? What do we got? Alan, are Too we going for Celica to or the Cadillac? The Celica. Celica. Thumbs up the, for Celica. The Celica won. The Celica won. Wow. <laughs> Woo. The Celica coming in clutch. That was awesome. Oh, he was driving. Yeah, take, take a look at that photo finish, and there it is. Ooh. Cletus, we pulled it up on the instant replay, the photo finish, and we saw that the Celica, it was, we're saying, we're saying a foot. We're saying a foot distance there. So, once again, I get a good jump on the light, but um, it wasn't near as good as the previous races. The car spun really, really bad. Um, I attribute that mostly to not having the correct air pressures in the tires. They were a little too pumped up that time. And the supercharger just adds way too much torque to the car. So you can see he goes right by me. Second gear. Second gear in this car is killer. But as third gear comes, here comes the old choo-choo train. And I'm going to give him a run for his money. And I make a little wiggle just to try to scare him. I do just a slight wiggle out to the right just to see if I can get him to back out of it before I dive into the corner. So that's why you see the car wiggle on the back stretches I'm, I'm trying to freak the driver out i think it worked but you know sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do and um then you guys saw it at the beginning of the clip i'm gonna show it again here that's how close that was that is a 70 80 thousand dollar car right off the showroom floor and this old duct tape queen and me and the 14 years I've owned it, I haven't even put $5,000 into it. And that's between buying the car for the three grand I bought it for, and all the broke parts after the wreck, and tires and everything, maybe $5,000 total into this car. The supercharger, all that was $300. 300 bucks to put that supercharger in. I did most of the fab work myself. It pretty much bolted in. But um, greatest race this car has had. Again, I really liked the Acura, but my poor driving and poor planning is what caused me to lose that one but that uh that race with the ctsv was beautiful um he's actually a semi-local guy he's down here in the area so my cousin sends me pictures of him sometimes it's like oh i heard this guy lost to a celica yeah yeah he did but again you know you, you win some you lose some i'm not gonna brag too much i just really like that video and then, um, so the last video I'm going to show you, because I'm not going to show you the race that happened after that, because it's completely boring. Boost pipe was completely off. I went against the boosted all-wheel drive Mitsubishi that just, I didn't have anything for them. So there's no point in really showing that video. It doesn't help you guys. There's not much footage of this car. It's all the other gentlemen. He is a great racer when it comes to spectator drags, but I'm hoping that with some work, this car will be able to at least prove a little bit as a front wheel drive um last race i'm going to show you is going to be the last race the the duct tape queen was in um i went up against a hundred and seventy thousand dollar zr1 corvette and i mean for the car not having boost because again it blew the boost pipe as i was staging in the lane i don't think i did too bad i mean for the zr1 Four four and a half car lengths to a hundred and seventy thousand dollar car is 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 respectable. And I did get a good jump on him at the start and and I did not lose any ground in the corners, meaning that I was keeping up with him corner speed. Again, this car does not have the correct gearing in it to go fast down the straightaways. My speed is all about corner speed. 
So he beat me completely straightaway base. That's it. And acceleration. So again, here's the video. Some upcoming things for the Duct Tape Queen. Uh, we're looking out to do another spectator drag, be it at the Freedom Factory, Auburndale Raceway, somewhere down here in the Central Florida area. Um, Auburndale's really not the right setup track for this car. The turns are really, really short. So again, with the car not really having a good straight line acceleration, it's not the best place to go racing. But uh, if Showtime Speedway or 417 or one of them want to do some spectator drags, me and the Duct Tape Queen will... We'll get out there and go do some fun. Um, again, this is my daily car. I drive this thing to work all the time, so it's not going to be the fastest thing in the world. I'm not going to put a bunch of parts on here that's going to make it uncomfortable to drive it down the road. The car already doesn't have AC, so if I'm listening to an obnoxious exhaust or something like that, it's just it's going to take all the fun out of the car. I mean, the car's a budget build. It's a daily driver, and that's how I'm going to keep it. So stay tuned to the channel. We're going to have more updates on the Beast. Hopefully some Icky Vicky content for the first time. Um, I'm hoping I can get the Green Giant out here on the channel here very soon. Not going to be doing much with it, but I will at least show it to you guys. Um, I'm going to try to get the Beast and the Green Giant out to the car show coming up on Sunday at Manatee Technical Institute. Um, we're going to Lance's Memorial Car Show. Um, Lance is a local car show leader and my family's been bringing cars out to his shows forever um, recently passed so we're gonna go support the guys and his family by showing up to his memorial car show hope to see some of you fans out there give the video a like and subscribe subscribe to the channel hit that bell we'll see you guys later I forgot to mention as a send-off uh, most of the videos that you saw of racing I borrowed from other youtubers Please go look around, see if you can find them. The videos that I had were all pretty janky. So I just borrowed from the Cletus YouTube video channel. Um, I want to say Florida R State Racing or Florida Racing Man and maybe one or two others. Please go check out their videos for the original content.